Facebook, how are you? Thank you for joining me today. I know it's a holiday, but I did ask you guys if you wanted to go live today, and you told me yes, you did want to go live, and so here we are. Um, I wanted to welcome you to the Money School with LaShawn Holland, and also, if you could do me a favor and share this video or do a Facebook Live watch party, I think it is necessary, especially what I'm talking about today, because a lot of times people um, get weary in their well-doing or they get stuck in their process. I'm trying to pull you up over here because I want to be able to, to um, see you. But hello, everyone. Um, I know I am believing that we're going to have a full set today. I don't matter. It doesn't matter. I see people are starting to log on now, so great. Anyway, um, I was looking, watching, listening to this podcast uh, earlier this week, and actually I've listened to it probably about three or four times now, and the podcast was actually an interview with Martine Rothblatt, and I'm not sure if people are familiar with her, but they call her the Wonder Woman who might save your life one day. And Martine actually is the co-founder of Sirius XM Radio and now um, has created a life-saving technologies for people because her daughter um, that she adopted was diagnosed with a life-threatening disease and told was told that, they were told that she only had three to five years to live and she was just a little girl when she was diagnosed. They were out skiing and all of a sudden, um, their daughter became very lethargic. Her lips turned blue. And so they left Colorado and immediately went home to uh, take her to a doctor and a specialist. And they ended up taking her to a specialist at Children's Hospital Center. But when they was given this diagnosis, she was um, diagnosed, she actually refused to um, receive the diagnosis. So it took her about 18 months of doing her own research and knocking down doors to be able to find a cure for her daughter. But in the process of her doing this, she built a multi-billion dollar company, which is the second billion dollar company that she had created after Sirius XM. And when she first came up with the idea of Sirius XM, she was told by, um, you know, that she wouldn't, it would never be able to work. No one would ever pay a subscription to listen to radio. She was told um, by the Communications Commission, excuse me. Oh, sorry. I wasn't paying attention, guys. <laughs> sorry about that. I laid my phone down. I see you guys was looking at my um, window seat. But anyway, she was um, she was just dogmatic in her approach about what she wanted to do in life. And so she did whatever it took to be able to accomplish it. I mean, when they told her no one would pay a subscription for Sirius XM, she proved them wrong. And then when people told her that her daughter didn't have a cure to accept it, she proved them wrong. And now she's doing something in the medical field. And, and granted, she's an engineer. But she's doing something in the medical field now that is transforming lives. Like, I didn't know this, but the percentage of um, when people donate their organs, the percentage of, there's a very small percentage that actually makes it to inside the bodies of the people that actually need the, you know, the donor, need the organ of the donor. And so she has developed a process by which, um, you can reduce the, the um, I guess, the occurrences of organs that are needed being thrown out or thrown away. If somebody was addicted to drugs, um, they won't use your lungs. If somebody had, you know, some other kind of disease, they won't use some of your body parts. And so she has created a process where she can make the organs like new again. And so she's saving lives all around the world. And one of the things that I loved about this podcast and the reason that I've listened to the podcast several times is because um, I was amazed about how driven she was when someone told her, no, this couldn't be done or this wasn't possible. You know, just her drive, she was extremely dogmatic in her approach and she was very determined to finish her process. And so, you know, now she's creating products that are changing the industry. She didn't change just her daughter's life. She changed thousands of lives. 
She didn't just set out to do one person. She changed a whole entire industry and she's done it more than one time. And she's on her third, um, you know, she's on her third multi-billion dollar business that she's building because she refuses. She's relentless in her approach to be able to um, change just what we do in the world. And so now her research saved thousands of lives and you know, I believe at some point in your life to change your financial picture, you have to become a rebel for a cause. And the cause is not being broke or not being poor or um, constantly uh, keeping the circle of poverty going in your generation. And so really that's the cause. And one of my friends once called me a born again rebel and I laughed, but it was true. I can't even count anymore how many times people told me something couldn't get done or um, something wasn't possible or that I wasn't even going to succeed at certain things from such a young age. I can remember as far back as my third grade teacher telling me I talked too much, so I was never going to do anything good in life. And her name is Miss Kirby, and she taught at Indian Hill Elementary School. So if you run into her, tell her to Google me now. <laughs> but... Um, but I can remember as early as third grade, I remember in high school, my high school guidance counselor telling me, you know, that kids like me didn't go to college. So I've been hearing it for a long time and I've also not been paying attention to it for a long time because it's not, um, they didn't create me. And so I feel like if a person didn't create you, they don't get the opportunity to create your future either. And so I always go back to the one who created me. What did he say about me? What did he say was possible for me? That's what reigns in my mind. But um, when I think about the term, and I also I'm doing this video today because as I was thinking about the podcast with Martine that I was listening to at my event, one of my Money Made Easy clients stood up and she gave the testimony how she had attended my event in 2018 and one year later, she made over $300,000. I can't remember the exact figure, but I know it was over $300,000 by just implementing like three or four things that she had learned at the event the previous year. And so I said from the stage, what a difference a year made. And that really was the theme throughout the whole thing. But she said something that really stuck with me. She said, um, you know, when she was giving her testimony, she said that, now she has the bounce back going. And that just stuck with me. And I thought about it all the time. And I thought about it when I read about, when I was listening to the podcast with Martine. And when I think about the term bounce back, I felt what she said when she said it. And I think it's important that we learn the art of the bounce back. People can count you out when life happens. Whatever tragedy or something, you know, bad happens or Something may not work out like you planned it to work out, but God put on the inside of us bounce back power. And so we need to recognize that and accept it and start acting on it. I have the bounce back power. And so say you had an idea to start a business and it didn't work out and it failed and you didn't make any money or you invested in real estate and then 2008, 2009, the real estate market crashed and you lost money and so you've been afraid to get back into real estate or things didn't go the way that you planned and so you're afraid to do it again or your husband left you for another woman or another man um because in these days you never know but uh you know or it could have happened to a man your wife left you for someone else and then they left you with all of the debt and so your spirit is so bogged down, it's hard for you to believe in what's possible again, or you lost your job and you're having a difficult time in finding another one, or if you feel like your debt um, is more than what you can handle at this point, and you had to file for bankruptcy in your past, and the shame of you filing for bankruptcy is preventing you from trying again. Whatever the past trauma was, I really don't care what it was, you have the time Every day when you wake up, you have the time and you have the ability to overcome it and build from where you are. That is called bounce back. And so you have to put yourself in environments that encourage you, encourages you to believe again. 
And when you run into adversity in your finances or your relationships or whatever they are, you can overcome it because you have the bounce back ability. So you have to cultivate a dogmatic attitude that you will never give up in spite of what happens. It doesn't matter. I'm going to keep running in spite of this. I'm going to keep running in spite of this. Some of my friends who are wealthy, they run into problems too. Just because you're wealthy doesn't mean you don't have any problems. That's far from the truth. You know, I had one that called me the other day and she's a multimillionaire. She just got a huge tax bill from the Internal Revenue Service that she didn't expect to do. And so, you know, we were just talking about ways that she can handle the tax bill, but when you run into adversity, I don't care where it comes from, what area of life it comes from, you have to cultivate the dogmatic attitude that you're never gonna give up. And so you cannot let no be the final story for you because it's not. Um, I can think of just recently, so probably about, I don't know if many of you know, but my book is actually launching um, on June the 4th, and I wrote a book that's called Born to Multiply, and anyway, um, I was on a telephone call with my publisher and uh, another person, and they asked me what was my goal for the book, and anyway, New York Times bestseller list was one of my goals, and so one of the things that was told was that um, well, the New York Times, and this is their exact words that they use with me, they only want a certain class of people. And so it's not the first time that I heard that. My own mentor, Marshawn uh, Daniels, when she was writing her books, she was told that um, having brown faces on the cover of books didn't sell well. And she totally killed it with the, um, killed it when she launched uh, Believe Bigger. And so it was funny. I didn't think anything of it when I to was told that New York Times was only looking for a certain class of people. I didn't pay any attention because, hey, I feel like God has everything in the palm of his hand. The Bible says he has the heart of the king in the palm of his hand and he will turn it any which way he choose. Every day I wake up and I say that the heart of the king is favored and turned towards me. And so last week I was in South Carolina I had to um, speak in South Carolina last week, and my husband and I, we get off the plane, we hop in the car with the driver, and my phone just keeps ringing with this Indianapolis number. And finally, I pick up the phone, and I answer the phone, and it's my publisher. And so my publisher said, I want to talk to you. And so long story short, they will send your manu your finished manuscript out to a company that reviews the book. It does book reviews. Now, if your reviews come back bad, they hide the reviews. They don't make them public. But if the reviews come back good, they're made public. So he called me and he says, listen, your reviews came back at the top of your categories. And I want to discuss with you about getting on the New York Times bestseller list. They just don't know the God that, you know, I serve. And so I wasn't stressing over it because they told me I didn't fit a certain class of people because above everything else, I'm of the God class. And when you of the God class, there are certain things that just doesn't apply to you. And that's how I think that doesn't apply to me, but I'm still going to stay in motion. I didn't allow it to get me depressed, get me down, to get me to think that I was less than. None of that happened for me. To be honest, I, I, I went on about my, my days. I forgot about the conversation until my publisher called me. And so, listen, you have to cultivate the mindset of the bounce back. That's important because 2 Corinthians 4 and 9 actually says that we have been persecuted but not abandoned. We have been struck down but not destroyed. Listen, guys, we are not destroyed by the things that come up in our lives. I don't care what they are. Even if you had to file bankruptcy, you're still not destroyed. And so believers don't fail, we just regroup. I want you guys to get that in your spirits. Believers don't fail, we just regroup. And it's okay to be in your regrouping stage. There is nothing wrong with being in your regrouping stage. That's your bounce back stage. And so don't be ashamed if you made a decision, you know, 
um, a year from now that you want your money to, you don't want your money to continue to be funny. Don't be ashamed if you have to tell your girlfriends, I can't hang out with you this weekend. Listen, by the time you keep spending, you know, $30, $40 going to the movies or going out to eat every weekend, multiply that by 4.5 weeks because that's the average in a year 4.5 weeks that's money that could have been applied to something else so don't be ashamed if you're in your bounce back just say hey girl i'm in my back bounce back phase i catch you later on that and so we have to understand that there's so much movement that you can make in a year if you're committed to it and you can you know we have to stop sabotaging our own financial success because of your past experiences it doesn't matter what your past experiences are. I know people that had the file for bankruptcy that are now multimillionaires. And so let that sink in. Just because something happened that was traumatic with your money or traumatic in your life, it doesn't mean that your life is over, that your life is doomed. You have to have the ability to pivot quickly, to pick up and to keep moving on. And so it may be baby steps or small steps. So what? Just take one step at a time. That's really important. You know, I know it, you know, one of the things that I think I really want people to understand is that a lot of times when we're making financial progress, when I talk about sab sabotaging yourself financially, a lot of times when um, we're making financial progress, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they do something stupid or they stop following through. You know, I just had a one-on-one -on -one call the other day with a client and I said well did you buy such and such program I can see in the system she did I can also see in the system how many modules you open up when you open them how often you open them so you really can't lie if you do lie I know you're lying but um and I asked her did you finish the program and she says no and I says well you only get results for the execution that you do not the results that you I mean the steps that you never take and so you can't stop following through with the process or we stop practicing the fundamentals that we know will lead us to financial freedom and abundance. And you stop doing it. Understand that everything I talked about this at my um, at Wealthy Revolution Live this year, the understand that everything we do in our lives, we do because of one or two things, either to avoid pain or to gain pleasure. That is it, every decision. And so we have to learn to really um, reattach the stories to circumstances that have happened in our life so we can change the results, we can change the movement, we can change the flow of our money. And if you're sabotaging yourself in an area of your life, understand that on some level, unconsciously, and for some people consciously, it's simply because you believe at some level you're and uh, you believe what you're thinking that at some level the situation of building wealth is going to lead to more pain than pleasure say for instance i remember when we went through a really challenging time i think 2004 it was one of the most horrific years of my life financially but if i would not have reassigned the um emotion of the experience of what we were going through I wouldn't have been able to move forward so instead of constantly rehearsing the pain of failing I had to change the association with the memory and so that's why it's so important for us to um, be able to change that when something traumatic you got to find the positive in it so you can um, with your neurons reassign your thinking and so that is really important for us to be able to do that because if you thought it would lead to pleasure you would do whatever it takes to stick to the process I know it sounds crazy but it's accurate I've been doing this guys for over two decades so I, I, I understand that your brain doesn't work logically it doesn't. It works on what we associate to things. And this is why in order to have the bounce back, you have to change your neural associations about money. How you think about money, how you think about money, how you feel about money, the emotions of money will determine that the habits that you pick up around money and how you think. And so that's why it's important that you have to be able to change your mindset even about the about the bounce back because if you have negative connotations from the all of the experiences that you have you won't even try and so 
it means that you have to change some of your core beliefs and we've got to make sure that um, increase in money is a positive and a pleasurable experience for us and not one in your mind that leads to pain. If all you ever remember is, well, I remember when I did X, Y, and Z and it didn't work out. I remember when I tried this program and it didn't work out. I remember when, I remember when, and all you're doing is focusing on the negative stuff instead of creating new positive experiences that you can go back and relate to. And so 2004 now to me doesn't mean the thing that it did that kept me stuck all those months. It was just a great learning experience for me. And so I tell my kids all the time, we don't fail. Either you win or you learn. We win or we learn. We win or we learn. And so we have to stop teaching even our children that failure is a bad thing because it's not, you know. People are constantly go to, it's like when people constantly go to conference after conference, chasing the answers to solve their problems, but they never execute anything. And at some level, they tried and failed, and then they're scared to try again. I find this a lot with a lot of my new clients. And just because one business failed doesn't mean that all of your endeavors will fail. Just because one marriage failed doesn't mean that, you know, the next time you find love again, that you're not going to spend the rest of your life with this person. It doesn't mean that seasons change. Your today is not your tomorrow. And you have to learn how to pivot quickly and bounce back. So if I was to take a basketball right now, if I was to take a basketball and I was to bounce the ball, just drop the ball, and once it hits the ground, what does the basketball do? It bounces back up to the original place, the original direction, right back up. And so if you fall down, I don't care if you're at the worst you've ever been in your life, you still have the ability to bounce back. Why? Because God gave us that ability to be able to bounce back. He says, listen, we're cast down, but we're not destroyed. And so the circumstances that you go through in life doesn't mean, and they may not be all good and grand. It's okay. It does. You just get to start over from a cleaner slate. That's all that means. And so I just want you to understand that ability doesn't always take you where you want to go. Although we have the ability to be wealthy, we have the ability to be financially free, we have the ability to have great relationships, it doesn't mean we are going to do it because there are steps that you have to take. And so you have to begin to um, learn the art of just the bounce back of getting back up every day that you wake up. In the morning is a new day to start. It's a new opportunity for you to meet somebody that will give you a nugget that could probably change the direction of your life. And so it's not all doom and gloom. You have to believe in the art of the bounce back. That's like, hey, I got my mojo back. You know, this may have happened in my past, but it doesn't define who I am. I may have filed bankruptcy, you know, a year ago. I don't care if it was a week ago. It does not matter. That doesn't determine your overall destiny. And so I'm actually going to go a little bit deeper in this in my e-zine that I'm going to uh, probably send out this week. And so if you want to go deeper with me and you're not on my emailing list, I recommend that you go over to LaShawnHolland.com and sign up for my e-zine so we can go in a deeper conversation with this. And so I just wanted to encourage you on this wonderful Memorial Day and not to worry about things that may come up. Things are always going to come up to distract you. Actually, if I didn't have the, the video streaming through my phone, I would... Um, go read a text that I sent somebody today and I just wanted to remind her that it doesn't matter when things come up in her life because she was sharing with me I actually put this on my Facebook post this is the first month that she's ever hit a $10,000 profit month and I was so proud of her and one of the things that I said to her was listen Things are going to come up in life. Things will always come up in life, but it's okay. You always have to remember that you win. And so, you know, the enemy is after your victory. 
And the thing is, you got to know that you already win. So when things come up, just remember, that's just something that you may have to jump over, go around, dig a tunnel under. I don't care how you do it. Just understand that you're always winning and never give up just because something happens. And so I want to tell you the same thing. Learn to bounce back because that is our superpower that God has given us. He said, listen, although you may be cast down, you are never destroyed. So go ahead and enjoy the rest of your whatever you're eating on this Memorial Day. I'll talk to you later on. Bye bye.